uh, investigation and we will determine where it goes to see what actually occurred and and try to get that information in you know as timely as possible um, we uh, also thank obviously JPS and, and Harris we thank MedStar for being a part of and, and helping us uh, get our folks to the hospital as well as CareFlight. Um, it was a coordinated effort. Uh, a couple of our folks were trapped in the in the truck. Uh, there were people who stopped Good Samaritans. We're trying to make we're trying to ascertain the details of where their involvement was uh, during the course of that. Um, and I don't have a whole lot more because that's still under under review and investigation to try to figure out what happened or you know and how they were involved. Um, but I will tell you that um, the community, the Fort Worth community, has just been amazing. Um, everybody has rallied together. There have been offers that I, I just I can't even begin to express my gratitude and appreciation to such a wonderful community has reached out to the fire department um, and is offering every, every anything that we possibly could need. So with that, um, I think I'll just stop and open it up to questions and see what I can answer for you. Can I, let, me, let me start over here and I'll just go that way real quick. Yeah, no, that that's a good question. So the it was a it was a fire engine company. It wasn't a ladder truck. It was an engine company. That engine's primary job is to find the fire and put water on it to put it out. That truck has hose to do that, and it also has water in a tank inside the truck um, that um, is, you know, adds weight and complexity to the vehicle. So it was a fire engine, not a ladder truck. Um, the all four folks that were injured obviously were in that truck. One was um, the operator of the vehicle has been uh, discharged. Uh, one of the firefighters in the rear of the truck have been discharged uh, to home. And the officer of the truck and the other firefighter in the back are the ones that remain hospitalized. The officer in the truck was in the right front seat and uh, was the most significantly injured. So I don't have, uh, Craig's working on getting all that for me as far as their tenure on the fire department. I can tell you they are all seasoned folks. Um, and um, they work in that neighborhood on that fire truck because they want to be in that neighborhood. They want to be in the community where the community's need is. That's a very busy engine company. It's a very busy area of the city. They take a lot of runs. They provide a lot of assistance to the community. They see, a, a, unfortunately, they see a lot of fire in that community. They provide a lot of assistance to MedStar. And they were on their ninth or 10th run of the day, and that, that would have been their second working fire of the day. So they are a, um, they are a um, group of aggressive firefighters who love the job and are there, there because they want to be there. Well, I think Scoop, I think it, it speaks to exactly what I just said. These are, these are all folks that it's my understanding that the officer just transferred from another area of the city to get back into that community to, to provide services to that community to be with that group of people that they that he was working with because, you know, the fire service is a family and and fire stations are like homes. People live there for 24 hours at a time. And, and so in order to um, work in busy areas of the city like that, it takes a special person with a special mindset and with a can-do attitude, a problem-solving attitude. And I think those are ways that I would describe all four people that work, at, uh, work to overnight last night on that fire truck. Yes, ma'am. So it, I know it was not a new route. However, one of the things that I think it remains to be determined is um, there's construction in the area. There's some uh, road changes, closures, bridge work, bridge maintenance. I have no idea. I'm not speculating that that was part of it at all. But to directly answer your question, no, there, that was an area that they were very familiar with and, and that they had, they've worked in for quite a while. Is it a time where you can express the importance of the 
So I, so let me start off with the, the last part of your comment about people pulling over. I have no indication and no, no speculation at all that somebody pulled out in front of them or that they were trying to avoid anybody. Yes, we thank, we, we ask people, we beg people when you see lights, sirens, noise that you pull, pull to the right um, and you try to get out of the way the best as possible. And that's really difficult in today's day and age for a lot of people. You know, cars are made to keep noise out, keep sound out. So the, so the idea is we ask people to be mindful and pay attention when they're driving. That directly answers that particular question. As far as the rest of it and as far as the way the police are, are conducting their investigation, I have nothing to add about speculation because that's all it would be at this point. But I, I, I give Chief Noakes the opportunity to talk just briefly with you about how the police conduct accident investigations because they're the subject matter experts in that. So, Chief, if you don't mind. Thank you, Chief Davis. Before I address that question, I do want to say that uh, obviously our thoughts and our prayers are with the injured firefighters, with Chief Davis, the entire department, and with the loved ones of those that were injured, and also for all first responders who responded to that incident. Anytime there is a significant accident like that, there are significant injuries, it's, it's very impactful to those who respond, regardless of who it is. They'll all get the same level of professional service regardless of who may be involved. But I have to say, when it is someone you know, when it's someone you work alongside, you serve alongside, someone whose job is to help others and now they find themselves in need of help, that can be even more impactful to all the first responders who arrive on scene. And some of those who responded were Forward Police Department Traffic Investigations Unit investigators. I can tell you a little bit about that unit from a personal experience because I worked in that unit as a traffic investigator for a number of years. Our traffic investigations unit is comprised of highly trained, highly skilled, highly professional investigators who have very specific training dealing with accident investigations. As all of you know, we are very early in this investigation. I don't have any specifics as to what may have caused this investigation, but we're going to be looking at every factor we possibly can, working with the fire department to make sure we gather all relevant evidence and information and we'll make sure we get some more information out to the fire department as we're able to make some determinations. Chief, is there anything you need to talk about? First thing, ask for thoughts and prayers for the fire department. Um, as far as the investigation, anyone who may have seen anything, it was very late at night or early in the morning, so there may not have been many people out, but we know we have many residents here in Fort Worth who have cameras around their house, maybe a doorbell camera or something similar. We ask that you check those cameras if you happen to have any footage, either just prior to, or maybe even that may have caught the accident itself, please reach out to us. We'd like to take a look at that to see if there's any evidentiary value. Have investigators had an opportunity to interview the driver yet? The investigators will hopefully interview all four at some point, but right now they have not been able to reach anyone because obviously their health and whatever medical needs they have are gonna come first. Thank you. Uh, your oversight of this department has always seemed to be a concern about accidents, if you will, by virtue of what other people are doing. To your knowledge, have you ever had an incident of this nature where this is an isolated, no one else is involved in this kind of uh, accident for, for your firefighters? Yes, so both here and in my previous employment in the city of Columbus where I, I came from. Um, unfortunately, uh, these kind of things happen. Um, I'm not justifying them in any way. What we end up doing is we, to the chief's point, we allow others to come in. We have others that help us determine. It's not just the police. Frequently, it will be uh, fleet mechanics that will look at the vehicle to make sure that the vehicle is operating within the parameters, it, it, you know, as far as the brakes and the transmission and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I have nothing to offer you saying we think this or we think that, but yes, I've experienced it before. And my goal from these previous experiences is, that I'm bringing here today is learning from others how to do two things. One, how to give the public the best confidence that we are going to take this seriously and get to the bottom of it. 
and at the same time give the benefit of the doubt to the people that were involved that they were doing the best they could in the situation as it developed. So I'd like to stand in front of you and say no, right? That it doesn't matter. But I, I think that that would be irresponsible of me. I think that it's safe to say that different types of calls, different things that you're hearing on your way to the call about people trapped or people in trouble, um, you're trying to make sure that you understand and you're paying attention to where you're going. There's a lot of things that can cause um, one call to the other to be a little bit more hyped, for lack of a better word. However, we teach to that, and I think Chief Noakes would agree with me, that the first thing we teach our people is you can't do any good and you can't help people if you don't get there, right? Secondly is that these are big, heavy trucks. We put people through driver, operator, and pump operator classes. We work to get them certified through the state to make sure that um, we are providing, you know, the best training and the best education to teach folks that these vehicles don't handle the way our, our cars at home do. So those are all things that we put in place through our training academy with support of city leadership. And, and um, But the first and foremost responsibility of our folks is to get there because if we don't get there, we, we can't do any good. So thanks for your question. So they, they were dispatched to a call just before 2.30, I want to say 2.29. At 2.34, they were involved in the accident. So they were responding on emergency with their lights and siren on to an address for a residential house fire. In the fire, we, we believe that there was one person who had minor injuries. Uh, we're, trying to under, we're trying to get a determination on the extent of those injuries, but we know that four adults and two children were displaced and we're working with the American Red Cross and other social service agencies to get them placement. Very much so. Yes, ma'am. So the city, the city fire department will respond to somewhere between 300 and 400 requests for uh, emergency assistance today. And as we're taking care of our own and we're asking for thoughts and prayers, um, there are 260 Fort Worth firefighters that remain on duty in support of the Fort Worth Police and MedStar um, to go out and solve the community's problems on a day in and day out basis. That's that's what we do, and that mission is not stopped. Um, even though um, our hearts are heavy and our focus uh, uh, re reflects an internal um, uh, need to take care of our, ourselves and our own, we're still out there responding to the public's needs and and. I promise you that none of these four guys uh, would want anything different than that. Ma'am? Yes, ma'am. So I, I, I have heard that as well. And that, that there was, that the officer in the right front seat of the truck was ejected. I have heard that. We have not been able to confirm that. There are competing storylines that are going about whether or not somebody stopped to render assistance and pulled them out. So I don't have an affirmative decision on that for you. And hopefully with the assistance of uh, the Chief's Accident Investigation folks, we'll be able to understand more whether or not he stayed in the vehicle or he, he came out of the vehicle. And that is under investigation. Um, I'm all right. 
And I'll tell you why I'm all right, because I'm surrounded by great people, right? I'm standing here with a group of people, got some people in the back, people up there. I'm all right. The thing about it is um, this community expects a lot of the fire department. The fire department expects a lot of me. The city expects a lot of me. I have people that are colleagues and friends like this guy standing on my left. I know that he's got my back. I got his back. If I need to talk, if I need anything, he's got me. So does everybody else in this room. And I can't. I, I said it to mayor and council. I won't apologize for it, and I'll say it here in front of you. Part of the success of this is having a positive labor management relationship. And for the Fort Worth Firefighters Local, who is at the hospital right now, and the police uh, Police Officers Association, who has brought food to, to my guys, and my guys giving, bringing food to the nurses and the hospital staff, the physicians, the ancillary support staff, that just say, that tells me that it's a family, it's an environment, we take care of each other, and we solve people's problems. So I appreciate you asking, but it's bigger than me, and I can only get through it with the support of everybody in this room. So I appreciate you asking. Yes, sir. It's my understanding that, that uh, they they did transport one person. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.